quality of status, of opportunity, and of endeavor, so many and so varied races of mankind. The great Muslim communities of Africa, India, Indonesia, and the small Muslim community in Japan show that Islam has still the power to reconcile apparently irreconcilable elements of race and tradition. If ever the opposition of the great societies of East and West is to be replaced by cooperation, the mediation of Islam is an indispensable condition. The 1883 book, Contributions of Arabs to the Progress of Science and Medicine, by Dr. A. Bertheran reads, To seek knowledge is a duty of every Muslim man and woman. Seek knowledge, even though it be in China. The scholars are the heirs of the prophet. These profound words and of the great reformer, he is, of course, here referring to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are an indisputable contradiction to those who seek and exert themselves in putting the responsibility of the intellectual degradation of Muslims upon the spirit of the Quran. Let them read and meditate upon this great book and they will read that the prophet incessantly called the attention and mediation of his people to the splendid marvels and the mysterious phenomenon of creation. The incredulous, the skeptical, and unbelieving may convince themselves that the importance of this book and its doctrine was not to throw back. Eventually, the intellectual and moral faculties of a whole people, on the contrary, those who have followed its counsels, have been, as we have described in the course of the study, the creators of civilization, which is astounding unto this day. C. H. Becker, author of Christianity and Islam, wrote in 1909, The Crusades, the Turkish Wars, and the great expansion of Europe widened the gulf between Christianity and Islam, while as the East was gradually brought under ecclesiastical influence, the contrast grew deeper. The theory, however, that Muslim conquerors and their successors were inspired by a fanatical hatred of Christianity is fiction invented by the Christians. Lastly, in his 1923 book, Islam at the Crossroads, De Lacey O'Leary says, History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping through the world and forcing Islam at the point of the sword on conquered races is one of the most fantastically absurd myths that historians have ever repeated. The history of the world is not what many of us were raised to believe. Tonight and last week we have changed history by bringing out the fact and helping to eliminate some of the misinformation that has been given in this world. Understand that Islam came as a mercy to all of mankind and that such a mercy was extended for centuries before being crushed under the heel of greed and nationalism. In these pathetic political quests in the name of Islam, seek only to serve Allah and the greatness of the Muslim world will return. Now, that wraps up our two-part program on the history of Islam. We hope it's been informative. Next week, we're going to go into the topic of marriage in Islam. And I want to do this show a little bit differently than the way we've done in the past. I want everybody that is listening, everybody that is listening at home now, if you're listening online, I want you to send in all your questions about marriage and relationships in Islam. You can send them in in English or in Tagalog. It doesn't matter. Text them to this number, 0922-604-4233. Again, the text number is 0922-604-4233. And also, if you have a really complicated question and you want to email it to us, email it to islamradio at yahoo.com. That's islamradio at yahoo.com. Now, before we go, I want to remind everybody you can check out our videos on YouTube. Go to www.youtube.com 
slash IslamRadioPH. That's www.youtube.com slash IslamRadioPH. And um, you can download the audio clips from the from this at our podcast account, which is islamradio.mypodcast.com. Again, that's islamradio.mypodcast.com. I want to thank you all for joining us this week and every week on the message. Um, I thank all the people that have helped out with the show. I thank my wife for being patient with me while I do the research and for uh, taking the time to record our videos every week. Um, thank you very much, sweetheart. Um, I want to thank my mother-in-law for continuing to be an inspiration to me, and I hope that you'll catch her show where my mother-in-law, my wife, and my wife's aunt and their friend, who is listening now, I'm sure, at the Alaklas Dawa Center, Sister Shida, um, they will be presenting a new installment of Women in Islam tomorrow night from 8 until 9 o'clock. Um, I want to extend my greetings to every Muslim community in the Metro Manila area. I don't have time to name them all right now as we're, we're going to the end of the hour. But thank you for joining us again, and we'll see you next week on The Message.